Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Welcome to all the people who are joining us for worship celebration on Pentecost and to those worshiping with us online. Today we welcome Pastor Mark Schering, um, who will be presiding and preacher for our services today. Let us welcome him. All right, please take a moment and greet those around you, you who you are worshiping with today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, let us stand and prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good. Let's pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dream, shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 104 responsively. How manifest are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Under the sea, great and wild, with the swarms too many to number, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and live the gaith in which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my need. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O <clears throat> soul. Hallelujah. A second reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to the faith, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, and another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to come down for children's message and my helpers.
Okay, so if you look around the sanctuary, you'll see a lot of people wearing red. You guys know why a lot of people are wearing, wearing red today? It's a special day today. Seth said it, can you say it louder? Pentecost, yes. And Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit comes. And it comes with a violent rush of wind and also fire, and that's why we wear red. So one way, that um, we can remember that the Holy Spirit is with us always is in the gospel. It says, when he said, peace be with you, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So this is why I like to do I put my hand out. Can you put your hand out? And breathe on it. And let out all the worry and stress that might be going on. And just remember that the Holy Spirit is with you always. And that you... They will lead you where you need to go. Now, another way I like to remember is by creating my own wind. And I did this with the preschoolers this week. And it was a lot of fun. I thought, let's bring the parachute into the sanctuary. Do you think we can do it? Okay. So, we have this big parachute. I don't know if some of the adults want to help me get it out. I tried to fold it up so it was easy. And then we might need to go there. There we go. Uh, Hannah, there's one over, or Seth has one too. Okay. Aubrey, you want to come over here? Okay. So, when we think of the Holy Spirit, we think of wind. So when we flap the parachute, we're going to make our own wind. Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, stop. Did you guys feel the wind? Okay, now, oh, our ball kind of deflated. Charlie didn't do a very good job of pointing it up. Um, but we're going to throw it in the parachute, and we're going to see how far the Holy Spirit can go when we create the wind, okay? And hopefully it goes far with it being deflated. We'll see. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go. All right. Good job. Oh, we're still going. All right. It's going far. The Holy Spirit is going everywhere. All right. Good job. All right. We can go ahead and fold it up. I think you guys had just as much fun as the preschoolers didn't even let you all. So, all right, we'll come back up here. We'll say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for filling us up with the Holy Spirit. May we go where it leads us. Amen. All right, thank you for coming down. All right, please stand for the gospel acclamation. to St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 through 23. Glory to you, Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. 
You may be seated. Thank you. Are you always this friendly? 
I came in here today, I've been welcomed by practically all of you, and I have so appreciated that. Tansy's earnest hope was that I'd have a good experience. Well, this morning's any indication. I'm having a great experience. So thanks for letting me be among you today. It's my hope that your pastor is getting some re well-needed rest. I'm sure she could use it. She's a hard worker, and I appreciate her very, very much. So let me welcome you. It's good to see you this morning. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Scriptures tell us that others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. They sure looked drunk. <laughs> they sounded drunk. They acted drunk. But Peter denied it. We're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. So which is it? Were they sober, as Peter said, or were they filled with new wine? Yes. Yes is really the only answer to that question. They were not drunk, but they certainly were intoxicated. They were sober and filled with a new wine. This is the gift and paradox of this day, the Feast of Pentecost. So I want you to answer a question for me, but don't do it yet. The question you first hear probably will not be the one I'm asking. What are you drunk on this morning? What intoxicates your life? Once upon a time, I was drunk on success. Once upon a time, I was drunk on busyness and exhaustion, intoxicated with self-importance and the need to prove myself. Once upon a time, I was drunk on fear, intoxicated by self-doubt. Once upon a time, I was drunk on perfectionism, intoxicated with being right, doing right, and having my life put together in a neatly organized and beautifully wrapped package. Once a time, I was drunk on the need for approval, intoxicated by what others thought and said about me. Once upon a time, I was drunk on knowledge, intoxicated with figuring it all out and getting the right answer. Once upon a time, I was drunk on, well, by now you've probably figured out where this is headed. You get my point. So let me ask you again. What are you drunk on this morning? What intoxicates your life? This is the intoxication that poisons and distorts our lives. It causes us to stumble and fall. It blurs our vision to the holiness and beauty of who we really are and who we are to become. It's the self-betrayal by which we do the very opposite of everything we say we want to do. I don't think there's a person in here today that wants to live that way. That is not God's intention or desire for our lives. That's not the life Christ lived or the one he offers us. We need sobriety. Pentecost is the sobriety that frees us from this intoxication. It's the power of God to change and transform our lives. The sobriety doesn't mean we stop drinking, however. It means we drink that new wine. At Pentecost, a new spirit. The Holy Spirit of God fills and intoxicates us we're intoxicated by God's love, God's mercy, God's grace, God's generosity, God's beauty, God's deeds of power in our lives. Let me offer you a few examples of what I'm talking about. Recently, I was at a doctor's office. Another patient was making a payment and scheduling her next appointment. She finished and started walking away when she came back to the desk and said to the two young women there, I'm sorry for the way I've been treating you. I know I've been hard on you and difficult to deal with. That was a moment of Pentecost. It may not have been the drama of rushing wind or tongues of fire or foreign languages, but it was filled with the power of God to change lives. In that moment, she was sober to and from her past and intoxicated with compassion and concern for others. Think about the day you fell in love. It may not have gone anywhere, or it may have developed and lasted for years. You were completely sober. 
Your mind was clear and convinced. Your eyes were focused. Your intentions were strong. At the same time, you were completely swept off your feet, crazy, drunk in love. You knew this was it. You tasted it. You wanted more of it. And you couldn't even name what it was. That was a moment of Pentecost. The power of God filling and changing you. Oh, you might say those are just emotions and feelings or, or hormones. Maybe so, but that's not all it was. You felt, if only for a moment, what it was like to lose yourself to and find yourself in the life of another. You were filled with a spirit not quite your own, one you did not create and one you could not control. You were set on fire with the love of God. Have you ever received a gift that caught you so completely by surprise that you were left speechless? I mean, the kind of gift that is completely undeserved, unexpected, and unimaginable. And it wasn't just an object or maybe even an action that you received. It was a grace that transported you. You were dizzy with love, joy, and gratitude, and at the same time, completely grounded and clear-headed about the significance and meaning of the gift. That was another Pentecost. And the wind of God's generosity had blown through and somehow changed both you and the giver. I think this kind of stuff is happening all the time. It's always Pentecost. It's all around us. It fills us. Pentecost is not just a, an event in the history of the church. The grace of Pentecost trans, transcends time, space, and the circumstances of our lives. The Spirit of God is continually being poured into our lives, bringing us to sobriety and filling us with the new wine of Christ's life. Pentecost is a gift and a grace to be lived. Living under the influence, that's what Pentecost is about. So tell me about your life. Where is Pentecost happening to you? Pentecost fills our lives to the brim with love. It opens our eyes to the mystery of God and the wonder and beauty of life. It softens our hearts and calls us to find ourselves in the lives of others. It allows us to stand in the most holy place of our truest and authentic self. This is why we celebrate Pentecost. We come here today to be reminded and to give thanks for the Pentecostal reality of our lives, to center ourselves on the godly life of Jesus, and to be sent out from these walls to live under the influence. Amen.
us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially Sean McDiffitt, Patty Garrett, Connie Smith, Marge Bodenot, Mike Colley, Heidi Walton, Ruth Lady Pollock, Bob Norris, Marion Smith, Keith Young, Mike Schiffer, Diane Kerr, Eric Sparks, Dave McDiffitt, Norma Hoover, and Jan Newell. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of your synod and community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. We remember the friends and family of Pastor Mike Corwin, especially his congregation, Bucyrus Methodist Church. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us extend a hand of peace to one another. Peace of God be with you, brother. Oh, yes. <laughs>
Let us join in our offering prayer. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. You may be seated.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in his grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and to serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. We have just a few announcements. Um, thank you to Pastor Mark Schering for being with us here today. Um, just a note, the church office will be closed tomorrow as we celebrate Memorial Day. Pantry Sunday is next week. And also next week, June 4th, is Smoothie Day to kick off a smooth summer. We will have smoothies available in the auditorium. And we also have our kickoff to BBS next week with a church potluck at the fairgrounds. All ages are welcome. Um, bring your favorite dish. And then on June 10th, we have Cardinal Corral. We are getting really close, but we still just need a few more host families. Um, so if you feel it in your heart to host these wonderful kids, um, just let us know by either calling the church office or getting a hold of me or Pastor Kempsey. Then we do have a few special birthdays. Um, today is Jerry Pound's birthday, and then yesterday was Charlie Atkins' birthday. So, oh. join me in saying happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with a purpose so that others may gain the kingdom.
Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.